let's look at another application of the Morris theorem. Um, and we've got our aim to be figuring out like sine to the power, like sine cubed or sine to the power 4, or cos cubed, cos to the power 4. So subtle difference, but a big difference. Like in the last one, we were looking at like sine to be theta's, cos to be theta's. If they're being asked about like sine to the powers or cos to the powers, this is another technique that we need to look at. Okay. Um, and it's important that you sort of see the distinction between the two techniques because if you try and do the, the opposite technique in the exam, you, you'll just get into a real mess and you won't get anywhere. Okay. So quite often on this style of question, in the question it will say let z equal cos theta plus i sine theta. And essentially what they're saying is the, the z in this topic just represents a general complex number which obviously would have a magnitude of 1. So we can just think about this complex number as being somewhere with an argument. You know, if, we, if we wrote it in exponential form, it would be 1 e to the i theta. So the, the magnitude is 1, and the, the argument is, is somewhere. So we're somewhere along this unit circle. Okay. Just don't forget e to the i theta is equivalent to cos theta plus i sine theta. Not essential on this, but just nice to see the, distinct, the link between that topic. But obviously the key thing we're looking for is, is it may say this somewhere in the question and if we're being asked about the powers of sine or cos. So we find an expression for the following. So if we want to write z plus 1 over z, we could say that would be equivalent to cos theta plus i sine theta. And then 1 over z. Don't forget that's just the same as say we write this out. Z plus z to the minus one. So we could also have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power minus one. Now if we apply the Marvis theorem for this, I probably should write that out actually at the beginning. Um, I think we should be getting comfortable with by now though. Cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n. We know that's the same as cos of n theta plus i sine n theta. So like here, because of the power is minus 1, we can, instead of worrying about this negative power, we can just apply the Marcus theorem and say well, it would be cos of minus theta sine of minus theta. So we've got cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos minus theta by multiplying inside with the Marvis theorem plus i sine minus theta. Something which we've seen before, but we, we need to get used to. Remember, cos of minus theta is the same as cos of theta. Sine of minus theta is minus, so this term would become negative. So we've got cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta minus i sine theta. So essentially we now know that z plus 1 over z is going to be equivalent to 2 cos theta. And this is going to be a useful identity to remember when we get on to the exam style questions a bit later. Possibly pause and try and do the similar expressions for the other terms. Okay, so z minus 1 over z. We could write it as cos theta plus i sine theta. And then minus 1 over z, so this is the same, isn't it? It would be to the power minus 1, z to the power minus 1, but we're subtracting this time. Bring inside and then remember this relationship, so that would just become cos of theta. So that would become minus. And then now we're subtracting, so the difference is cos minus cos cancels. Minus minus becomes plus, so that would be 2i. 
sine theta. So z minus 1 over z. We could write this 2i sine theta. Let's do one more. I think we should be able to figure that one out for yourself. Okay, so if it's z to the n plus 1 over z to the n, we could write it as cos theta plus i sine theta to the n cos theta plus i sine theta to the minus n. Apply the Marcus theorem, so that will become cos n theta plus i sine n theta. You may get, once you've done a few of these, you may get a bit lazy and skip it, which is fine, but just be careful. Like, if this is an exam question and it's a show question, you do not want this next step here that, that illustrates this understanding. You, you need to make it clear from one line to the next. Like, there will be a mark awarded for this piece of understanding, so to just avoid the temptation to skip straight to the answer. So you should write cos minus n theta plus i sine minus n theta, <laughs> not a space, and then you've got the next line. We could then say, well, that would be equivalent to cos of n theta, and then that would be equivalent to minus i sine of n theta. And then we cancel, and we get z to the n plus 1 over z to the n is equivalent to 2 cos of n theta. All right, the last one's very similar. I'll let you try that one um, before we move on. Let's look at example 4. Um, and if you were just hit with this question, like if it, some, in the old exam, it used to structure it and you'd be given a hint, like it, it might do like a little part A, might be like a show question, and then part B might hit you with this. But there is, an, there is a potential where they just hit you with this straight off the bat. And you need to be able to look at this and go, what, what's going on here? Like, how would I even approach this question? Doesn't mention the Marvis theorem. Doesn't mention, well, actually, it, it would have to say, let's say, oh no, it wouldn't have to actually say that. We could, we could start by saying that. So I suppose we'll have to say that. Um, we'll start by saying, let's say, equal. Um, cos theta plus i sine theta. And then if we do that, we can assume all of these relationships that we've we've just found. So yeah, we, I think they probably would give us a bit of a clue, but if they don't, you have to realise that we're being asked about cos to the power 5. And that's this application that we're looking at now. So even if you realise that's what the application is, like how on earth are we even going to start this question? So if you look at the left hand side, we want to be raising cos to the power 5. Now, what we could say instead is we could say 2 cos theta to the power 5. We know something about 2 cos theta on this topic, don't we? We know that 2 cos theta is the same as z plus 1 over z. It's a bit of an abstract beginning, but if you just stay with me and try this, we'll see how we get to this expression that we're aiming to get to. Okay, so we, the key to this topic is using this equivalent. Like if, we, if we're being asked about cos theta, we know that cos theta can be written in terms of z. You, you might want to actually, if you wanted to, you could divide it all by 2 here, and then you would get straight to this expression. Like you could start by saying cos to the power 5. Like if you rearrange this for cos, You'd be dividing by two inside here, but I think maybe it's a little bit nicer if you leave the two here because then it avoids a lot of the fractions. And then we'll get two to the power five, and, and you'll see where this fra this fraction comes from in our answer that we're aiming for. Okay, so left hand side really straightforward: two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So we could write that as thirty-two cos to the power five. Right hand side, we do have to actually expand this. Okay, so the thing about Pascal's triangle our coefficients are going to be this and I may struggle to fit this on the mini whiteboard but let's see, so we're going to have z to the power 5 plus 5 
z to the 4 times by 1 over z. You may be able to do, do this bit in your head with a bit of practice. Okay, then we've got 10 z cubed 1 over z squared. That's just going to become z, isn't it? Um, plus 10 z squared 1 over z cubed plus 5 z to the power 1 1 over z to the 4 and then we'll finish with 1 over z to the 5 ok so I've just started this up um, remember we're being asked about cos to the power 5 and we want to get to this expression here which is in terms of like cos thesis, cos 2 thesis, cos 5 thesis and what we've got at the moment is an expression in terms of z and we have got cos to the power 5 the last step is to look at what you've got from your expansion and we want to pair these terms think about why we want to pair those terms we know this holds and this is something else we need to remember on this topic. Z to the n plus 1 over Z to the n is equivalent to the 2 cos of n theta. And then again, look at what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to cos of n theta, cos of 3 theta, cos of 5 theta. So we can use this. Okay. Maybe let's write that down. Z to the n plus 1 over Z to the n. We know it's equivalent to 2 cos. And theta. You might want to reference that in the question so you can justify to the person who's marking it like where this next step comes from. So z to the 5 and z to the minus 5 would be that, that red bit would be 2 cos 5 theta. You can take a factor of 5 out if you want. z cubed and z to the minus 3 would be 2 cos 3 theta. Take a factor of 10 out. Z, Z to the minus 1. I mean, that's the original identity that we started off with. But you could think about it as 1s, and that would just, just be 2 cos of 1 theta. And you're basically there then, aren't you? Like, look at what we're trying to get to. And we've got 5 theta, 3 theta, theta. And just divide through up by 32. Okay, so therefore, cos to the 5 theta. If you divide it out by this 2, we get 1 16th. Cos 5 theta. 10 divided by 32 would be 5 16th. Cos 3 theta. And 20 divided by 32, we could write as 10 16th. And obviously, I suppose we should write it in the form given, just to fully ensure we get the full mark. There we go. Okay, fair amount going on there, and we are going to need to practice a lot of this. And um, so there's lots of other questions that we'll practice using similar techniques. Just one thing before we finish on, on this video: potentially think about why we've asked this, because this might not, not this might not be the end of the question. Something else might come later. A really useful application for this: imagine if I was trying to integrate cos to the power of five, and like you've got to remember that you cannot. Like integration does not, if that bracket there, if that's not a linear function, you can't integrate that. Like, don't try and add one to the power or do anything weird. Like, essentially, you can't really integrate cos to the power of 5. You can't integrate cos squared even. So, what we could do instead is we could use this expression. And we can integrate cos 3 theta, we can integrate cos 5 theta. We just divide by the 3, we divide by the 5, and we integrate. Alright, guys, thank you.